Civilization VI Gathering Storm releases on February the 14th and it's shaping up to be one of the biggest and best in the franchise's history. In today's video we're going to look at our top 5 features that Gathering Storm will bring to Civilization VI. Taking 5th place on our list are the new civilizations and leaders the expansion brings. There are 8 new civilizations and 9 new leaders in Gathering Storm. Although I know some of the leader choices aren't to everyone's taste, in our opinion the civs that are included are just as, if not more, creative than usual. In addition, the introduction of Eleanor of Aquitaine as the leader of two civilizations demonstrates a new dynamic to the way which leaders can work in civilization and is a particular highlight of ours. It's always nice to get new and interesting civilizations in an expansion pack and Gathering Storm certainly ticks this box. In at number 4 is power and consumable resources. Resources are now more important than ever and work in almost a completely different way to the base game. Strategic resources are now used as fuel which is used to power your cities and many late game units. Fuel is especially important from the industrial era onwards with buildings in a city needing fuel to function to their maximum potential. Additionally, many resource dependent units need these resources for production and maintenance. A lack of resources for maintaining a unit will make it less effective in combat. Number 3 on our list is the World Congress. Yes, the World Congress is back in Gathering Storm and it sees the inclusion of favour as its currency. Favour is needed to shape the world in the World Congress so be sure to gain some through alliances, influencing city states and competing in world games. You'll also need the World Congress if you're going to claim a diplomatic victory which also sees its reintroduction in Civilization VI in this expansion. In addition, all emergencies now go through the World Congress too. Before we take a look at what features have topped our list, let's take a quick look at some honourable mentions. Gathering Storm brings a new future era to the game. The new era sees the expansions of the tech and civics trees, a sort of randomised tech and civics trees at that. In addition to the new civilizations, there's plenty more new stuff in Gathering Storm 2. In total, there's 18 new units, 15 new improvements, 9 new buildings, 5 new districts, 2 new city states, 9 new techs, and 10 new civics. The expansion also includes the new scenarios of the Black Death and War Machine. It's a small feature, but the new art style in the expansion for the names of rivers, etc., is really something to look out for. If you've been watching the build up to the expansion you'll know what I mean, but it just seems so much more sophisticated and suitable to a civilization game. In at joint first place are natural disasters and climate change. I ideally wanted to put natural disasters in at number 1 and climate change as number 2, but the explanations didn't really work that way around. Civilization 6 Gathering Storm sees the arrival of natural disasters in the form of volcanic eruptions, river floods, hurricanes, dust storms, blizzards, tornadoes and droughts. Not only do these disasters add another dynamic to the unique way each game develops, but they also force you to think even more about where you choose to settle. Certain locations carry with them more risk of flooding, i.e. next to a river, or a possible volcanic eruption. You're going to have to take all this into account because natural disasters can pillage or destroy both tile improvements and districts. However, they can also enrich tiles so you need to think about that too. Climate change ties in closely with natural disasters. As the game progresses and CO2 is released through the consumption of certain fuel resources, there is an increased chance of floods, storms and rising sea levels. Although the challenges of climate change can really affect the late game, there's now also new technologies which can help you manage the challenges posed by rising sea levels and the increased risk of flooding, as well as green sources of energy to attempt to slow down climate change and its dangerous consequences. That's it for our top picks of the new features coming to Civilization VI with the Gathering Storm expansion. What do you think to our picks though? Did we miss anything or do you completely agree? Be sure to let us know down in the comments. Also if you have enjoyed the video make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for plenty more civilization content. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you in another video soon.